This was your first homework question yesterday. And the answer is given at the side already. Okay, do you have any issues with this? Anybody needs help? I think the only significant thing over here is that for the perimeter, um, RQ, this length is 30 centimeters because they stated that it's a parallelogram. Okay, that's probably the only thing. Then um, to find the area of this parallelogram, we take the base times the perpendicular height. Perpendicular height over here is 15. If, now this is my own question, huh? if the 15 is not given and they give us 16 over here and we don't have this 30, how then do we find the area? What else do we require to find the area of this parallelogram if we only have 16? So if 16 is our base, can you identify where the perpendicular height is? Can you identify? Okay, we probably need to draw some lines, right? So we're going to use uh, um, some common phrases. So you have to be very familiar with them. Huh? I am going to draw PQ extended. So this is a common phrase that we use, PQ extended. Then I go over to the opposite side, SR. From SR, any point on SR, I will drop a perpendicular down. So dropping a perpendicular down, maybe you want to um, put PQ horizontal first. Anywhere, I probably I'll choose uh, R over here. I drop a perpendicular down. This will be my perpendicular height H. Could we have done this without producing, without doing PQ produced? Yes, it is possible if I start from S and I drop a perpendicular down. So this is the same height. I could have done it over here also. And then I will, require, I will need to produce it a little. All these, they have the same perpendicular height. It is the shortest distance between these two parallel lines. Okay? But of course, in this question, we don't have to go through all that trouble because they gave us information that this is a parallelogram, so this is 30. And if I drop a perpendicular down from S down to RQ, now we already have the perpendicular height of 15. So from there, we can calculate the area quite easily. Very straightforward. Since there were no uh, issues with that, let's move on to exercise practice three. Okay, now, um, finding the area of this tabletop. Any issues? I don't think there'll be any issues, but this portion, leaving your answers in terms of pi. Is that good news to you? Are you comfortable with leaving your answers in terms of pi? Um, some yes, some no. Some of you are, uh, would rather use your calculator. Oh, um, I need to calculate in terms of pi. So area must be pi r square plus the area of this um, rectangle over here, three times of, and since the, the radius is 0 0.5, then the diameter must be one, right? Radius is 0 0.5, so let's square that, 0 0.5 square. Sometimes we are very caught up with trying to find the final answer. When you see this, you get very excited, you key it into your calculator, pi times 0.5, we square this, then we add that to a pi times 0.5, we square this, close the, mm, close the bracket, then we add 3. So you see your calculator giving you this, 3.785. You think you have this as the final answer already. But you look at the question is leaving your answers in terms of height, then how are we gonna convert this back to in terms of height? And it's gonna be very difficult. In fact, almost impossible for you to really work backwards to get it in terms of height. Because this value that you've written down is only it's not exact. Your calculator gave you a very precise answer with many decimal places. Therefore, we should be focusing on simplifying this part. Pi times 0.5 squared. 0.5, you should know that is just half. If we square this, we get 1 over 4. So this is simplified to become pi over 4. Because 1 over 4 pi is the same as pi divided by 4. 
a quarter of pi then plus 3 now this is in terms of pi already when they tell you to leave it in terms of pi it means you have less work it doesn't make things more complicated it makes things easier for you and there's an there's another benefit this value over here is precise it's very accurate there is no rounding off involved so if you ever need to follow up with the next part of the question requiring the answer in part a would you use this or would you use uh, whatever i calculated earlier on from the calculator we would want to use this this is the most exact okay so same for part b um, the parameter is simply 3 times 2 you must have the annotation huh? don't just give me calculations and answers so parameter equals to 3 times 2 plus pi uh, 2 pi r because that's the formula for the circumference of a circle 2 times pi times the radius 0 0.5 so 6 plus pi this will be in meters this will be in square meters Living in terms of high makes things easier for you. Last one more question. Uh, we've got three semicircles over here. Any issues with this? Anybody needs to go through? Okay, if not, then the thing you need to take note for this question is that the bigger semicircle, the, the largest semicircle, has a diameter of has a diameter of 18. Therefore, its radius is 9 centimeters. So with that, we should be able to get a parameter. We should be able to get that area of the shaded region. So 1, 2, 3. Now we will continue with this question. Practice 5. This is an icon for a camera. Uh, measurements are in millimeters, so it's quite tiny actually. Fine, nah, now now there's a something to take note over here. Fine in centimeters, the perimeter of the shaded region. Um, quite uncommon for them to ask you for a perimeter when you have a figure like this with a hole in the center, because perimeter, as we know, should be the outline, right? Whatever shape it is, just measure the outline. So in this case, do we consider the center circle as part of the outline? Yes, we do actually. Okay, quite quite a rare kind of question. But when they ask for parameter, just all the outlines. Okay, inside outline also. Compare that with, um, for example, this question practice number two. When they ask for the parameter over here, please do not include this dot this um this line over here and do not include this line. Okay. Okay. So um. We can see that this is made out of many different parts. I'm sure you know how to do this. The challenge is whether you will make careless mistakes. So how, how do we go about doing this? Perhaps you can use a colored pencil, a colored pen or pencil as you write, you cancel. Okay, so parameter is four, cancel. Okay, I've, I've included that in already. I've accounted for the 4 already. Plus 1.5. Plus over here 1.1. Plus 2. Plus. And then if you are confident, just keep adding. Mm, the next one over here. This is also 4. Plus 6. So you cancel, cancel, cancel everything already. Then we see that, oh, um, the center circle was not accounted for yet. So now let's add that in. Plus 2 pi times 1.5 Pretty straightforward Use your calculator 30.624 hey, Different from the answer given What went wrong? Hmm? Oh, they want it in centimeter What is my unit over here? Yeah, that's in millimeter, right? All measurements in millimeters. So convert this to centimeters, divide it by 10, get 3.0624 cm. Round it off. Since they didn't specify how many significant figures, what is the default? 3. You have to remember, every time we have 
measurements or calculations involving pi, we can be sure that our final answer is not going to be exact already because pi itself is an irrational number. It's going to be a lot of decimal places. Then by default, it will be in three, uh, three significant figures. 3.06 cm. Okay, next, find in square millimeters the area of the shaded region. Are you happy to see square millimeters? You should be, because the measurements are in millimeters. Which means that you can just apply the formula. You do not have to do any conversion of units. So in this case, it is it is good news that they want it in square millimeters. Okay, but this shape over here, um, we don't have a formula to calculate this area. Therefore, we need to break it up into sections. The earlier questions were more straightforward. You look at it, you know how to break them up. How about in this case? Are there some lines that we can draw to help us? Where will you draw the lines? Okay, take some time, think about it. Think already? Um, is it a good idea to draw this vertical line now? Doesn't, doesn't really help me, right? Although I can find the area of that particular rectangle. How about I zoom in? How about we draw a horizontal dotted line here? Is that helpful? Ah, then I see a rectangle at the bottom. I can calculate the area. But I do not want this circle, so what must I remove? Area of the circle. Straightforward, yeah? Over the top, over here. Should I break it down into triangles and rectangles? No need, right? Can I apply a formula of a certain shape? What is that shape? Trapezium. For a trapezium, I need um, a few things. I need the length of the parallel sides. So I, I think it's quite clear over here where the parallel sides are. One of them has length of 2 millimeters. What about the other parallel side? 6 minus? 6 minus 3 or 6 minus 2. Okay, so the other parallel side will be my dotted line over here. Is it 6 minus 2 or 6 minus 3? 6 minus 3. Minus away the 1.5, minus away the 1.5, and I'm left with 3 centimeters here. Okay, so sum of parallel sides, not an issue. What about the perpendicular height? 1.1. Wait, wait, is it 1.1? Oh, it's 1. So you have to be very careful which dimensions refer to which length. Okay, because it's very misleading over here when they wrote 1.1. Oh, does 1.1 refer to the slant, slanted length? Or does it refer to the vertical height? So in this case, this 1.1 was the slanted length. We are supposed to use 1 as the perpendicular height. Okay, so let's put everything down in our working. I hope you can see that this is not tough. We just need to spend a bit of time to plan how we want to do our work. Area. So we know that it's going to be divided into three parts. Rectangle, circle, trapezium. Since we talked about the rectangle first, let's use the rectangle. Four times of six. There is the right area of the rectangle. You can choose to add the trapezium first, then you take away the circle. Or you can take away the circle and add the trapezium. It doesn't matter. Then you have to be familiar with the logic involved and know that they are the same. They are equivalent. So I like to do all my addition first, then I remove at the end. Okay, but if you want to remove now, fine, go ahead. So now I want to add the area of the trapezium on top. Formula is half times sum of parallel sides. And I encourage you, every time you use the formula for area of trapezium, you say it in your head. Half times sum of parallel sides times perpendicular height. Because the more you say it now, when you are practicing, the easier it is when it comes to your preparation for your tests and exams. Then you don't have to spend the night before, oh, I remember that we need to memorize the area of the trapezium, need to memorize this and that, this and that. So many things. You're going to be stressed. Might as well use the time now. When you're working on it, repeat in your mind. I'll say it out. 
sum of parallel sides, we said that it was 2 plus 6 minus 1.5 plus 1.5. Okay, however you want to present it, as long as we our result over here will be 3 cm, it's okay. Okay, even if you straight away 6 minus 3 or you just put 3, I will accept. Because it is reasonable that you guys are able to do 6 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 in your mind. It's reasonable. So you can leave it as 3. But it's not reasonable for you to do everything mentally and just give me the final answer. That's not reasonable. Okay, so sum of parallel sides times the perpendicular height, which is 1. Now this is the formula of, uh, this is the area of everything. Now we need to take away the area of the circle. Pi radius 1.5 squared. Okay, so use your calculator again. Be very careful. So state your calculator value. We have 19.431. By default, you always give to 5SF, then you round it off to 3SF, 19.4. I always want to see the value before you round off. And this is good practice because sometimes we require the value in a previous part. And if we talked about this before already, if you were to use the final answer, 19.4 for your subsequent working, you're going to lose some accuracy. Even this 19.431, is it exact? It's not exact, but it's good enough. If you're really kiasu, you want to be really exact, you will be using your calculator value over here, 19.4314, blah, 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 blah. But we don't need you to go through all that trouble. Okay, um, here we have practice six, parallelogram and a triangle. Let's take some time to read through this question. Algebra, then we can start writing down the area. Area. Let's start with the parallelogram. Formula for the area of parallelogram, we have the base times the perpendicular height. So for parallelogram, again, we have four sides. Any one of them can be the base. And they will have their own corresponding perpendicular height. But in this case, which is more suitable to be the base? 4x or x? Mm, because why 4x? They already give us h. And h is the perpendicular height e. 4x is the base. Now, if you choose x to be the base, then you're in trouble because they did not tell you what the perpendicular height is. So, we have decided we will take 4x times the perpendicular height h. So, instead of writing 4x times h, we can actually put them together, right? 4xh. It just means 4x times h. And we still need to add the area of the triangle. So, formula for the area of a triangle. So far, whatever we have learned for area of triangle is the half times base times and that's what your primary school told you, times height. But um, we, to be more complete, we say perpendicular height. Just like our trapezium, just like our parallelogram, there is a perpendicular height. So half times the base, the base happens to be 4x or so, times the perpendicular height. So just as in our trapezium or our parallelogram, once you have decided the base, we go opposite to the opposite end, you drop down a perpendicular line, this will be our perpendicular height. And it corresponds to 2h. Okay, half times 4 times 2 is 2xh. So 2xh plus... No, no. Uh, half times 4 times 2 is actually 4. So 4xh plus 4xh, we get 8xh square centimeters. So that's the beauty about question that tells us to show. Show that blah, 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 prove that blah, 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 because you get to check your work. If you notice early on, I made a careless mistake. I said, six, I said 2xh plus 4xh. Then we have gotten 6xh, right? I would have gotten it wrong, but oh, it was a show question. I must be 8xh, so you can check where you went wrong, okay? After you have shown that it is 8xh, please help the marker and help yourself by writing shown. They tell you to show and you have shown it. So include this.
Now in part B, given the area of the figure, 64, H is 2x, find the vertical height. What do you think we can do with this information? What should we do with this information? Substitute. Let's substitute. Area given to be 64. So instead of writing area, we write 64. The next thing that we need to write, what comes after the area? I see an equal sign. I see an 8. I see x. Do we know what x is? At this point, we don't know, right? Okay, let's, let's just put it down, since we don't know. Then I see h. h is given to be 2x. Do you think I should leave it as h or 2x? Do you want to leave it as h or do you want to change it to 2x? Yeah, because if you change it to 2x, this is one equation. How many are known? One unknown. One equation, one unknown, confirm you can solve it. Simplify this. 64 equals to 16x squared. One equation, one unknown. I solve for the unknown. Okay, I solve for x first. What should the next step be? What can I do to both sides? What can I do to both sides? Divide by 16? Yeah, good idea. Okay, let's see what 64 divided by 16 is. Oh, we get 4. This tells me that x squared equals to 4. What should I do next? What should I do next? I want x. I don't want x squared. Square root. Square root both sides. Are you the one introducing the square root? Did the question say take square root on both sides? Or, or did they show you the square root symbol? They didn't, right? You are the one introducing the square root. Huh? You need to remember something. When you introduce the square root yourself, you must put plus minus. Okay? From here, we have two values. X is either equal to 2 or negative 2. Do you agree? Because when you square 2, 2 power 2 is 4. Even if you choose negative 2, open bracket, negative 2, close bracket, you square it, you also get 4. Negative times negative will give you positive. Okay, so we have two possible values of x. But now you need to be logical. Can we accept x equals to negative 2? Why cannot? Why not? Why can't x be negative 2? So why if the area is 64? If my x value is negative 2, um, I substitute in over here, negative 2, negative 2, I multiply everything, I still get 64. What's the problem? Any other suggestions on why we cannot select x equals to negative 2? So we go back to the question. Where does x appear? Here and here. If x is equal to negative 2, what can you tell me about this length? It's negative 2, isn't it? Can the length be negative? Is there a negative length on your ruler? No. So, here we need to reject this. Which means that I only have one value of x. Is that what the question wants? Is that what the question wants? No, that's not what they want. They want the vertical height of the parallelogram. They do not want x. x is the slant height. This is the slant height. The perpendicular height, h, is going to be equal to 2x, which is 4 centimeters. Okay, so um, that's all for today's lesson. You can start preparing, start doing your homework for um, textbook exercise 12.3 and the review exercise. The next lesson, we will go through practice 7 and the last and page 8. So two more questions to the end of this.